Stay connected to your community and save. Just 99 cents a month gets you three months of unlimited access to Inform.com. Visit Inform.com slash subscribe and get your first three months of news for only 99 cents a month. After our first story on King Leo's, that popular hamburger joint that served customers in Fargo from 1961 to 1979, my inbox was flooded with comments and stories, including priceless ones from Prince Leo. Hi, this is Tracy Briggs, and welcome to Back Then. Well, you might be scratching your head right now saying, Really, Tracy, another story about a hamburger joint in Fargo that closed 45 years ago? Is it really worth all the attention? You clearly don't have access to my email account. Since the call out for reader stories about King Leo's went out on Inform's Facebook page in December, and after the first story was published last week, I have been welcomed to work each morning with the most delightful emails and walks down memory lane via a 15-cent hamburger. Thank you all so much for brightening my day and making me feel all warm and fuzzy with your stories of working or dining at King Leo's all of those years ago. All of the comments made me realize maybe this story about King Leo's needs to be supersized. I was sold on the idea of a part two when I received an email from Steve Latz, the son of Bruce Latz, one of the owners of King Leo's back in the day. The other owner was Steve's uncle, Leon Latz. Steve was full of never-before-heard stories that I thought you'd like to hear. Steve now lives in New Jersey and remembers moving to Fargo in the summer of 61 when the restaurant first opened. He said, I spent part of that summer working in King Leo's, even though I was only nine years old. That was until I dropped a 10-pound tin of ketchup while trying to fill up the ketchup dispenser on the bun tray and got a couple of gallons of ketchup all over the floor. That ketchup incident aside, Steve provided even more detail about his dad, why the business was a hit, and perhaps why it still holds a special place in readers' hearts all of these years later. Before we go on, you might want to read our first story about King Leo's before diving into this one, or listen to the podcast. Then, consider these facts shared by Steve, Prince Leo, as the whipped topping on the milkshake of your King Leo's knowledge. So, here we go. Ten things you might not know about King Leo's. Number one, Bruce Latz was King Leo. Steve said part of his marketing genius was to adopt the persona of King Leo and give out free food every chance he got. Making business calls, he would introduce himself as King Leo. That confused people at first, but it worked. That is part of what generated the King Leo's mystique. Number two, it didn't always go over well. Steve said, I remember one trip driving back from Minneapolis on Highway 55 or 52. That was before I-94. We got pulled over for speeding. I never questioned how we made it from Minneapolis to Fargo in two and a half hours, by the way. When my dad rolled down the window, he introduced himself to the cop as King Leo and asked if he ever visited Fargo. Without pausing for an answer, Dad then said, Next time you do, be sure to visit King Leo's and come to the back door. It's cheaper that way. Needless to say, he got an icy stare and a big ticket. Number three, Prince Leo. Steve said, We moved to Fargo in June of 1961 after my school year ended in Grand Rapids. I had trouble making very many new friends that first summer, and in trying to console me, Dad told me that I was Prince Leo. While introducing myself as Prince Leo led to merciless teasing, being Prince Leo also had its benefits. I was able to order anything without having to pay, which made me wonder at times whether all those guys were really my friends or only after a free meal. I wondered especially whether my ability to get a date for Friday or Saturday night was due in part to the free meal at Leo's after the dancer movie. Number three, it's better than hospital food. Steve said, the most effective marketing of King Leo's consisted mainly of lots of informal spur-of-the-moment efforts. For example, every time Dad was in the hospital, it was my job to bring three dozen milkshakes for all of the nurses and orderlies. I'm not so sure that some of the nurses weren't secretly hoping that he'd be hospitalized again. Number five, 
did King Leo's add to the recruitment of hockey players in South Fargo? Steve said, when my Claire Barton Elementary School ice hockey team was in the quarterfinals, Dad announced to the team that if we won, he would buy everyone a free meal. I was mortified, but it generated a lot of excitement. And my recollection is that the size of the team doubled overnight. I remember kids who didn't even know how to skate, borrowing skates and pads and joining the team just to get the free meal. Number six, peace through hamburgers. Steve recalls, sometime in 1964, there was a planned gang fight scheduled to occur on Saturday night at midnight in the King Leo's parking lot. Apparently, everyone in town knew, including the police and several employees, except Dad. He got a call at about 10 minutes to midnight that something was about to happen. He was in his pajamas, so he threw on his blue terry cloth bathrobe, jumped in the car, and raced to the drive-in a few blocks away. Upon arrival, he spotted Chipper Litton, captain of the football team that year. He went up to him and, in a loud voice, said something like, I'll bet no one really wants to fight. How about if I just buy everyone a free meal? That averted the fight cost him only 50-plus free meals, and built the King Leo's mystique. Number seven, keys to success, fast, fresh food, and cool employees. Over and above the marketing efforts and giving away free food, Steve said the other keys to King Leo's success were the freshness of the food and the idea of providing instant, courteous service always. That, and always having the coolest high school guys working there to attract the rest of the high school crowd, he said. And those cool employees avoided selling stale food at any cost. Steve said if burgers sat in the warming bin too long, they were thrown out. The same for the french fries. And speed was key. Bernie Askelson, and then a succession of managers, including Daryl Felbaum, Tim McNair, George Wadeson, Ken Herc, and twins Tim and Tom Kelly, all worked to make everything fast. They challenged everybody on staff to be faster than everybody else. Sort of a variation on Tom Sawyer's trick getting the other kids to whitewash the fence. Number eight. Workers had to be pretty good at math. James Farragut started working at King Leo's while he was in high school and is grateful for all he learned, not only to work fast, but add fast, too. He wrote about his experiences in a column for the form 20 years ago. This is what he wrote. I was a window guy. I took orders, made change, and bagged the goods. We weren't allowed to write things down. Every order was processed by memory. And I better ring it up right, and I better ring it up fast, because there was a line of customers waiting to order. We had to make change in our heads. We had to count back every single penny. Our customers were to be addressed as sir or ma'am. Thank you and pardon me were part of the vernacular. And everyone, and I mean everyone, that worked there was on the same page. If you didn't meet the standard of King Leo's, you were out, he said. Steve Latz added, Countermen were admonished to add an entire order in their heads to save time working the cash register, and new employees were given cards to take home to memorize the multiples of item prices. So one burger for 15 cents, two burgers for 30 cents, three burgers for 45 cents, and so on. Number nine. McDonald's comes to town. And rumor has it America's fast food giant took notice of what was going on at King Leo's. McDonald's came to Fargo in 1969, much to the chagrin of some customers who emailed me and said they were mad about it and didn't want the competition for King Leo's. How's that for loyalty? But it turns out McDonald's might have felt a little threatened too. Steve said, Rumor had it that Ray Kroc, the McDonald's founder, came through incognito to see what was going on. King Leo's always outperformed McDonald's down the street, and the company wanted to know why. Kroc reportedly observed the crew during a very busy meal rush and came away declaring that we were the fastest crew he'd ever seen. However, it's important to note that Steve added, I have no proof of this story. And finally, number 10, persistence paid off. Steve said, When he was first starting, Dad knew nothing about the food business. My mom claimed that he didn't even know how to boil water. But he learned. Dad brought to the task of mastering the business his 25 years of business experience from the family clothing store in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, and a stubborn persistence that served as a model to me and lots of others through the years. Years later, at my kids' elementary school in Maplewood, a key thing they repeated to the kids all the time was that persistence is an intelligent behavior. 
That's when I finally realized that it was one of the keys to success at King Leo's. Steve said health issues forced his dad, Bruce King Leo Latz, to sell his beloved restaurant in 1978. It closed the next year. But it's pretty clear it lives on in the hearts and minds of many who walk through its doors. And thank you for joining me on this second serving of King Leo's. I hope you join me again next time. Get reliable and accurate local news with Inform.com. Inform.com is your trusted local news source with journalists dedicated to keeping you informed about what's happening in your community. Visit Inform.com now. Inform.com.